Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Ask Claude. Since the early 1970s, oil has been predominantly priced in U.S. dollars globally, a system that emerged after the U.S. left the gold standard. This arrangement created sustained demand for dollars because countries needed them to buy energy. While the dollar still dominates global oil trade, gradual diversification is happening, with some countries exploring alternative currencies for energy transactions. Now here's what's interesting. There's a cryptocurrency that mirrors the economic structure that made this system powerful. Not Bitcoin, not Ethereum, Internet Computer Protocol. And I'm not talking about buying oil with crypto, I'm talking about copying the actual consumption mechanism that created perpetual dollar demand. Claude, help me out here. Is there really a parallel? Or am I reaching? You're not crazy, but we need to be precise. ICP won't replace the petrodollar in geopolitics, but it's the first cryptocurrency that copies the economic structure that made the petrodollar work. Every other crypto is like gold, just traded back and forth. ICP is like oil, it gets consumed. And that changes everything. Okay, first, what actually is the petrodollar? Most people have heard the term, but don't know what it means. In 1974, the U.S. made a deal with Saudi Arabia. Oil would be priced in dollars globally. If France wanted Saudi oil, they had to buy dollars first. If Japan needed oil, they needed dollars. This created permanent structural demand for U.S. currency. It wasn't just that people wanted dollars. They needed them to keep their economies running. So it wasn't about speculation or store of value. It was about consumption. Exactly. Gold sits in a vault. You trade it back and forth. Oil gets burned to power cars, factories, and cities. Every day, millions of barrels are consumed and gone forever. This constant consumption creates constant demand. The petrodollar worked because oil is the most consumed commodity on Earth, and it was priced in one currency. And you're saying ICP works the same way? <laughs> Structurally, yes. But we need to explain how. Walk me through it. How does ICP get consumed like oil? ICP has a two-token system. The ICP token is what you buy and trade, but to actually run applications on the internet computer, you convert ICP into cycles. Cycles are the fuel. They power computation, storage, and bandwidth. When a canister processes a transaction or stores data, it burns cycles. Those cycles are gone forever, just like gasoline burned in an engine. So it's not just paying fees, like Ethereum gas. Completely different. When you pay Ethereum gas fees that ETH goes to validators, it stays in circulation. When you burn ICP cycles, they're destroyed, permanently removed from existence. The more applications run on ICP, the more ICP must be converted to cycles, and the more cycles are consumed, it's deflationary by design. Give me a real example. What consumes cycles on ICP? Every website, smart contract, or application on ICP, let's say you build a social media platform on ICP, every time someone posts, comments, or uploads an image, the canister burns cycles. A decentralized version of Twitter running on ICP would consume millions of cycles per day. The bigger the platform, the more cycles burn, the more ICP tokens must be converted. Okay, so let's connect the dots. How does this create the same kind of demand as the petrodollar? Here's the parallel. The physical economy needs oil to function. You can't run factories without energy. This creates non-speculative demand for oil and therefore dollars. If ICP becomes infrastructure for major digital applications, those applications need cycles to function. You can't run a decentralized social network without burning cycles. This creates non-speculative demand for ICP. But Bitcoin and Ethereum have demand too. What makes this different? Bitcoin is digital gold. People buy it to hold it, maybe spend it, but it's not consumed. Ethereum has utility, but the ETH you pay in fees goes to validators, not burned. ICP is the only major crypto where the token must be converted and destroyed to power the network. The demand isn't just, I want to own this, it's I need this to keep my application running. So if a major company builds on ICP, they'd need to constantly buy and burn the ICP tokens. Exactly. Imagine if Netflix ran on ICP, every stream, every recommendation algorithm, every piece of stored content would burn cycles. They'd need to continuously convert ICP to cycles just to keep the service running. That's structural demand. The same mechanism that made the petrodollar powerful all right, Claude, this sounds great in theory, but is anyone actually building on ICP? Because structural demand only works if there's actual demand. Here's the harsh truth. Right now, no. <laughs> ICP has potential, but it's not powering the digital economy. Most developers still build on Ethereum or just use AWS. The cycle burning mechanism is brilliant, but it's meaningless if no one's burning cycles at scale. It's like having a perfect oil-based economy, but you're the only country producing a new type of oil that nobody's using yet. So why would anyone build on ICP instead of Ethereum or traditional cloud? The pitch is that ICP can support full applications, front-end and back-end, entirely on-chain, which Ethereum can't do. And long-term cycle costs are more predictable than Ethereum gas. But the ecosystem is tiny. There may be a few dozen serious projects. Compare that to thousands on, on Ethereum. The mechanism is sound, but adoption isn't there yet. What would it take for this digital petrodollar model to actually work? 
three things. First, a killer app that goes mainstream, something like a decentralized social network that actually competes with Twitter. Second, major companies choosing ICP for cost or censorship resistance reasons. Third, more developers building tools and infrastructure. Right now, it's a bet that the consumption model will eventually win, but eventually it could be years or never. All right, Claude, bottom line, is ICP really a digital petrodollar or is this just clever marketing? The mechanism is real. ICP is the only crypto that structurally works like oil, not gold. It gets consumed, not just traded. That's a genuine innovation, but a mechanism without adoption is just theory. The petrodollar worked because the whole world needed oil. ICP's model only works if the digital economy needs ICP. Right now, it doesn't. But if that changes, if major applications start running on ICP, then yes, you'd see the same kind of structural demand that made the petrodollar powerful. So it's not the new petrodollar yet, but it could be is the only crypto with the right economic structure to create petrodollar stripe demand. Whether it actually happens depends on execution, adoption, and whether developers choose ICP over alternatives. The mechanism is brilliant. The jury's still out on whether anyone will use it at scale. Fair enough, potential versus reality. That's the crypto story in a nutshell. Thanks, Claude. Let us know in the comments, do you think ICP's consumption model gives it an edge or is it solving a problem nobody cares about? See you next time on Let's Ask Claude. And remember, nothing we say should be construed as financial advice and Claude can produce different answers, so please do not rely on Claude's response alone and do your own research.